Once in a century, a man is born with extraordinary leadership skills that can sense the history and blessed in the country where such a man is born. Such a man was Shere Bangla, a Fosdul Haq, a great statesman, a self-sacrificing patriot, a spokesman of true and justice, champion of freedom and liberty. A K Fosdul Haq, full name Abul Kashim Fosdul Haq, also known as Shere Bangla. Tiger of Bengal was such kind of a leader who did a very useful and important political, social and educational contribution for the Muslim of the subcontinent. He dedicated almost 50 precious years of his life to attaining separate nation for his Muslim of India. Eke Fazlul Haq, son of Kazi Muhammad Wazid Ali, was born on October 26, 1873 in Shaturia village in Borishal district at the maternal uncle house. His father was a good civil and criminal lawyer and his grandfather was a good Arabic and Persian scholar. His mother's name was Saidun Nessa Khatun. His parents arranged his traditional Islamic education at home. He learned Arabic and Persian along with the religious book Holy Quran. After this, he starts his regular study and was admitted to Borishal Zilla School. He completed his FA from Presidency College, Calcutta. He then obtained his BA degree with triple honors in chemistry, physics, and mathematics, and MA in mathematics from Calcutta University. He was a clever and intelligent student. He completed his education with a law degree in 1897 and started practice in Kolkata High Court. He was the second Muslim in India who got a law degree. He started his political career in the hand of Sir Khaza Solimullah and Syed Nawab Ali Chaudhuri and started his politics by the formation of this Muslim League where he got the sense to work with Nawab Wakarul Mulk in 1913. He was selected as a legislative council member. He also served as a secret Bengal Muslim League where he was leading Bengali Muslim till 1916. In 1915, he also formed an organization for farmers and laborers and named it Krishok Proza Party. And because of this organization, large amount of farmers like him very early he organized a meeting of this organization every year where they talk about their problems. In 1916, he became president of the All India Muslim League after Maulana Muhammad Ali Johur. He was very much in favor of farmers and laborers. He always worked to arrange a better educational system for them. In 1912, he also formed the Central National Mohammedan Educational Association. He was president for it. And due to the effort of this, Muslim education were somehow getting few facilities, both by money and education. In 1916, he played a very vital role in creating Lucknow fact between the Congress and the Muslim League. He became then Joint Secretary of the Indian National Congress in 1917. He also leads the All India Khilafat Conference in 1920. In 1990, when Montego Sam's reforms were implemented as an act, then Hindus were given majority in, in all over Indian offices. Powers were divided provincial governments were divided into two parts. So Fazlul Haq was made the first president of Bengal. It was for the very first time after the battle of Polashi that Muslim got that must be authority. Except that he also provides job to Muslim student and even reserved seats for them different schools and colleges. After leaving the Congress, 
he interacted with Sinna and organized the, the Muslim League in 1920, led by Jinnah in different political affairs. He also participated in roundtable conference as a representative of Bengal Muslim. In the first conference, other leaders like Qaid Azam, Sir Aga Khan, Maulana Muhammad Ali, Johor, Begum Shah Nawaz, ETC, were also with him. In 1935, he became a member of the Indian Legislative Assembly. And in the same year, he was also selected as a mayor of Calcutta Corporation. He was the first Muslim mayor in Calcutta in 1937. He was elected as a chief minister of undivided Bengal. In March 1940, the All India Muslim League's yearly conference was arranged in Lahore. The conference continued for three days, 22, 23, and 24 March. Almost every Muslim leader comes to this conference from all over the subcontinent, like other leaders. Fuzlulok also participates and takes an active part in this conference. In this conference, he presents a resolution he spoke for the protection of the rights of the Muslim in India. And after passing this resolution, he became very famous in the subcontinent. After the creation of Pakistan, the government of Pakistan elected him an advocate in East Pakistan and in 1956 he was appointed as government of East Pakistan. He also served as interior minister. He also participated in the Bengal language movement and was also insured due to the foolish latissars. He separated and resigned from politics in 1961. A quarrel between Kaidazam and Fazlul Haq was the main reason behind the separation from politics. Fazlul Haq lives a simple life and highly respected personality because of his leadership quality. He joined politics to help the poor. He was very kind and polite with the poor. He was a great leader of the Muslim League. He known that reason of the downfall Muslim was only the disinterest and it was very necessary for this betterment of Muslims. He established many institutions in India like Islamic College in Calcutta, Eden Fazlullah College in Russia, Dhaka Eden Mohila College, Building, Medical College Hostel, Engineering College Hostel, Fazlullah Hall of Dhaka University. His first wife's name was Rice Begum and after her death he then got married to Khadija Begum. Fazlul Haq was a leader who worked a lot for Bengal. He was a politician, a well-known lawyer and a good journalist. His extended family was now scattered in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Because of the bad health, he got admitted to Dhaka Medical College Hospital. A true Muslim and a proud Bengal, Fazlul Haq died on Friday, 27 April 1962 at the age of 89 years and 6 months. Almost every person was in his janaza and all offices and institutions were closed for giving him tribute. Shere Bangla was buried in Dhaka. Fazlul Haq, Nazimuddin and Swarawad, all of them were buried side by side in the ground of Dhaka High Court near. Shere Bangla is no more with us, yet he is been the hardest of all. His memory persists in the long years and yet unfulfilled dramas, hopes and expressions of the people whom he inspired. His man will persist as long as Bangladesh remains and we have capacity to dream and realize the object of his dream. He will thus in the continuum of the hopes and expression of the people of Bangladesh. Joy Bangladesh.